Guys like this only have three options. Die young, life in prison, or they start talking. Not on our American soil! Make them leave! It's our last gig. Why? I don't want my kids to be around this. Hey, guns! What you looking at? You. We don't tolerate stupidity. Got that? Yes! Do you have one that you regret? Some. Why, you got one you regret? Who was your first one? Fred gave it to me. He took me in. I owe him. I think real family don't make you owe shit. So you a family man now. Listen, talk to me, fam. You know the bad news, they ain't gonna like it. You're better than those racists. I don't know what to do. So I wanted to know about that journey for you and going from making the short to the feature length film. So um, I moved out to the state um, five years ago and I read this article in the newspaper about Brian Widener and I called my wife and I told her that I want to do this film and she said, fine, let's, let's try to meet uh, and Brian Widener and his wife and uh, through MSNBC we got their email and we got in touch with them. We met them in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and um, then I wrote the script for f four years, um, but no one from Hollywood, from LA, wanted to make this film because they told me, it's look, it's a great script, but it's it's almost like sci-fi. It's like, it doesn't exist, all those new Nazi gangs, like it's not really happening right now, and it's it's maybe, make it in, in Europe. Maybe it's a German or French movie or whatever. And I told him, look, I, I made the research because I made, you know, and it's it's really all over the place here. So I didn't have the money to make the film. So my wife told me, look, all your feature films in Israel were shorts before. Uh, why don't you, um, why don't we make a um, short film? Thank you, by the way. I use this little bitch, you know, he thinks he's a shot caller. But... You wait, going back to the next one of these? No. It's gonna be massive. Next no, time. we're done with this shit. Yeah. It's our last gig. Why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want my kids to be around this. We're just here for a paycheck. I saw an article about a neo-Nazi skinhead father who taught his son how to shoot Mexicans in the border in Arizona. And one night, the father came home uh, drunk at 2 a.m. and the boy shot him in the head because he thought he's an African-American intruder. So I was struck by that. And, you know, it's kind of like what you teach your kids going to end up biting you in the ass. So we made a short, um, my wife and I put all our um, retirement money uh, into this short and, you know, we gambled on it. And uh, after we made the short, we sent it to producers again and Trump got elected, Charlottesville happened, uh, the synagogue massacre, the whole thing just happened and it was crazy. America was on fire. Um, so... Orrin Moverman, he just read the script from the beginning and said, I'm in. And he's my mentor, he's my brother, he's my everything. But he didn't have the money to put in it. And, and then uh, Sting, the musician Sting, he saw the short and said, this is probably one of the best shorts I've ever seen. And he told his wife, we, we got to be involved in the feature. They got in, on board to the feature, Maven Production and Celine Rattray. And suddenly we are finding ourselves in upstate New York shooting the film. I want to help. The feds need your full cooperation on this thing, Brian. Okay? There ain't no deal without it. I just want to know where we're going to go, where we're going to live, where the, what about the girls, look, man, look, our All names. of that is classified, okay? Even I won't know unless you want me to. Well, what about school for the girls? They will be taken care of. I promise you that. It's been a hard time. I mean, yeah, especially for a little one. Yeah. <clears throat> well, look, man. Look, you have an out, Brian. I can help you. What is something that haunts you after doing this film about the skinhead culture? 
You know, I, I made a research and I think that America knows a lot about skinheads now and, and fascists now more than any other uh, kind of years that it was hidden. It was the backyard of America. Now it's in the front of America. You see them. I, I see how it's basically a cult. They lure kids when they're 14, 13, and they teach them how to hate. They give them a, a food. They give them sense of family after those um, uh, teenagers are in the streets and coming coming from poverty and coming from broken houses and homes and uh, they give them a kind of like sense of um, family it's all about family at the end of the day it's all about belonging to something it's like wolves you know it's it's in every, in every gang it doesn't matter if it's ISIS or, or fascism or uh, extreme terrorism and it's it's just luring those people and give them a sense of family and I saw that because my grandmother was part of a cult uh, a different cult but uh, I saw the cultish element returning here you're still breathing because I own you every inch of ink on me is it true, as he said, that you're an evil man? <laughs>